Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well today. This time we're going to be talking about the first Doom novel. How do you novelize Doom? Uh, well, you basically add a whole bunch of characters to it. You give those characters more motivation. And yeah, the end result is a pretty fun book. I really did enjoy this one, so let's get into the story and talk more about it. Okay, so let's get into the story of Doom here. It's actually going to be pretty close to the sort of bare-bones outline that was in the game. So this book follows the first three episodes of Doom, and we follow Doom Guy, who in this book has been renamed to Corporal Flynn Taggart. And we're also going to be following Private First Class Arlene Sanders, and later on we get to meet scientist Bill Rich. That's not till much later in the book, so we'll we'll get to him, though. So, Flynn is basically Doom Guy. He got in trouble for punching his, uh, his commanding officer in the face because his commanding officer was going to commit a war crime, and Flynn didn't really want that to happen. So, he, yeah, he kind of, uh, I don't know if he overreacted, but he definitely punched his uh, commanding officer in the face. So you kind of get the backstory of how that happened and you find out that is his uh, company of marines has been sent to mars they get a distress signal from phobos they go to phobos most of the marines go to figure out what's going on uh, flynn who is awaiting court martial is guarded by two guys it seems like every one of the marines has been killed off uh, Flynn then beats the shit out of the two people guarding him, takes one of their weapons, most of their ammo, and leaves. So those two guys are probably dead, but it, it's fine. Then Flynn basically just goes through the levels of the first episode of Doom, and he's following kind of these little breadcrumbs that Arlene is laying out. At least he believes it's Arlene at the time. And he just kind of talks about how unsettling the whole thing is, how it's a shock to his system, how he's creeped out by, like, the monsters and everything, and he's trying to rationalize what's happening. And we get more of his backstory, like how he went to a religious school that sort of plays into the way he's viewing things. And, yeah, it's it's kind of fun watching him go through, see the different monsters, try to figure out names for some of them. And at one point, he talks to one of the zombies to figure out what's going on. The zombie doesn't really talk because it's brain's mush. And then he ends up talking to one of the imps to figure out what's happening. And that was probably the coolest part of this book is because you're, you're just with him by himself and his thoughts. And then you get another character that's added, even if it's just briefly. And the imp tells him, you know, he can join their side and he won't get turned into a zombie. We don't know if the imp is being honest or not, because obviously it's an imp. But that was kind of one of the things that is going to lead to my dislikes later. I wish they had done a little more with that, but unfortunately they didn't. So he's following these breadcrumbs that he believes Arlene is laying, laying for him. So like there will be a little arrow with AS on it, and he's following those throughout the, at the first level. And then we come to probably the stupidest thing. That that happens, he goes through a teleporter to go to the next section, and he loses his clothes and all of his gear with him. And I'll talk more about why I think that's dumb later. So then he goes around, gathers up all of his stuff, meets Arlene in this episode, and they kind of work their way through the second episode. They sort of sit and talk for a little bit more, so you have more of a back and forth between the two of them. And that's nice just because you're not stuck with the same person the whole time. Even though I like Arlene in this book, I think she's kind of awesome. So they go to the third section, into the third episode, and that's when they meet Bill Rich, and he's kind of been detained or, like, captured. And he gives them the whole backstory about how this was a failed experiment and that sort of thing. He also tells them a bit about the spider mastermind as well. 
So he is the only one of the three that has met the Spider Mastermind, and he kind of is struggling to explain to them what he saw because even at this point in the book, if you it's kind of hard to believe that there's like a mechanical spider with a giant brain on top and it's got a Gatling gun. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. But uh, yeah, that part is pretty cool. You also find out that the Spider Mastermind has another weapon besides its chain gun. It can like do these psychic attacks which mess with people's minds and that sort of thing, which was pretty goddamn awesome for the book. Never would have worked in the games, but it, it was pretty awesome for the book. And you he you can tell that Rich is kind of struggling with that a little bit, like it was messing with him. And they go through that whole thing. They meet up with the Spider Mastermind. Rich ends up dying, which sucked. <laughs> I honestly wanted him to stay alive a lot more. But he ends up dying... They defeat the Spider Mastermind, and the Spider Mastermind kind of gives Flynn, like, an image of what's happening on Earth. And you just kind of see, like, the demons are invading Earth and everything. Throughout the throughout the book, they don't really know if it's hell or if it's aliens. So they're not totally sure as to what's happening, which makes a lot of sense, because it's, it, it's just two low-ranking Marines that weren't given a whole lot of intel when they went in there, and then they meet Rich, and Rich doesn't even totally grasp what happened. He just knows they were doing an experiment with these ancient gates. They opened one up, and demons came through and started killing everybody. So, yeah, that's where it kind of leaves. They find out that the moon that they're on now, Deimos has kind of been turned into a space station, is orbiting Earth, and they're going to go to Earth in the next book, and that's going to basically be the next... That's going to be probably the plot to Doom too. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome to go through and, and read all of this and to kind of read a story that's that has a lot more meat on it than the book. So let's talk a little bit more about the characters and that sort of thing in a second. So the the game didn't have really any characters in it. It just had your you know player cutout, which was Doom Guy, and then all the different monsters and everything. So yeah, you had a lot to really build on going forward. Uh, yeah, and like I said, Fly gets uh, Doom Guy gets his name, which is Flynn, and he's pretty awesome. And the book talks a lot about his relationships with the different uh, Marines in his company. Or in his group, whatever it's called. I'm sorry, I don't know a whole lot about Marines. So he talks about all the different people that that he was stationed with. Talks about his relationship with Arlene quite a bit. Uh, it's brought up how much he disliked Lieutenant Weems, which is, was his commanding officer. I'll talk more about him in his own little section. And he also talks about... Uh, just the different Marines that he runs into along the way. So, like, the gunnery sergeant he talks about, they bring up um, Arlene's boyfriend, uh, boyfriend slash fiancé. Sorry, it's been a little while. I don't exactly remember the relationship. He gets brought up, and I thought that was going to build... They built um, him up quite a bit. They run into him as a zombie. Arlene kills him, and then we have, like, a little downtime of her trying to rationalize it but we don't get anything from her perspective it's all from Flynn's perspective so and that was a little weird but basically they kind of do a lot more to humanize Doom Guy they give him a personality give him a backstory they give him friends so there are people that he actually cares about it's not just a character running through things killing monsters indiscriminately you kind of know more about him so while you're reading this, you care a little bit more. You want him to get through. You want him to find Arlene. You want him to basically save the day and everything. Uh, I personally wanted him to go back and get those two Marines that he bailed on. <laughs> for for whatever goddamn reason, he didn't bring those two with him. He admits while he's fighting, you know, the two... I cannot remember what they were, their names were. But the two people who are guarding him, he's like, yeah, they wouldn't have made it this far. But still, 
uh, he just kind of left both of them there and told them to barricade the door with their one pistol and a handful of rounds. So, so they're dead. Um, just, yeah, they're both dead. I shouldn't be laughing at that, but it's two fictional characters, and I find it kind of funny. But anyway, you get a lot more character development. You get a lot more motivation for why these people are doing what they're doing. Uh, one character, um, Bill Rich, he was kind of an interesting character to appear in the book. He's really just sort of there as like an ex- uh, exposition dump to explain what the hell is going on to these two. And then he sort of turns into a badass for a little bit. He, he's described as like this big, tall, kind of chubby scientist, but he's running around with these two Marines just blowing things away with a shotgun. So I was kind of hoping he would stick around, <laughs> but um, no, he he's kind of he 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 doesn't he does die for like a reason. So he he serves like the purpose of advancing the story, explaining what's happening, giving you more background on the science experiment that took place. He explains to them how they're going to take out the spider mastermind who is somehow mind controlling all of the demons to kind of do what it wants wants to do but yeah he i wish he had been around a lot more <laughs> it's it just kind of it was kind of a uh, kind of upsetting it was i was just a little uh, a little upset that he died in this anyway uh Flynn and Arlene they had like a a very strange it's not really a straight. They had a uh, they had a friendship which could have, in theory, turned into something more during all of this, or before all this happened. And I just kind of thought, you know, it was pretty good and everything like that. I I think you know the the payoff to Arlene's fiance getting killed kind of sucked, but for the most part, they all have their motivation. They want to get through this whole thing. You have a character who cares, obviously, about what he's doing. He has much has a much better backstory now. He has kind of a fun back and forth with Arlene, so you kind of get the feeling that they've not done exactly this before, but they've been in combat before, so they know each other pretty well. I just really like the characters in this book, uh, with the exception of Lieutenant Weems, and I'll get more into why I, I think the book should have done a better job with him. Lieutenant Weems, uh, like I mentioned, he was commanding officer for the the unit that uh, Flynn was in. Uh, He's the reason that Flynn is going to be court-martialed. I'm guessing that's not going to happen now, but, you know, we'll see. And then it, and it's explained that, it's explained from the demon, even though we can assume the demon's probably lying because it's evil, that uh, people could could join the demons, not get turned into zombies. When that was said in the book, I was like, okay, well, that's going to make it so Weems is built up a little bit more. He's going to be sort of like the big bad person. He's going to say, well, you know, I killed off the other Marines. They didn't want to join the zombie invasion and whatnot. So, yeah, I'm big bad evil guy now. And it would have led to a much more satisfying death if that had happened to Weems. I'm just thinking more as like a, a horror movie or something like that because you have have the big bad guy in the horror movies or kind of like the jerk in the horror movie who's screwing over the guy that we kind of want to see live through all of this. And that usually leads to like a, a more significant death for that person. That was what I was kind of hoping for here. You have Weems built up as this kind of cowardly piece of shit and... He dies in a gruesome way, but it wasn't as satisfying for me to be like, well, okay, well, Flynn should have killed him. That would have made sense. You have, uh, it would have been better if uh, Weems had joined the zombies and Flynn had killed him and, you know, kind of got back at him for screwing him over quite a bit and uh, allegedly committing a war crime. That just would have been better for me. I would have liked to have seen Weems die in a much different way and actually show how show him as like more of an evil or cowardly person because he betrayed the company and 
joined up with the uh, with the demons and whatnot. That's really what I wanted to say about Williams. I just felt it was kind of like a missed opportunity. So what did I like and not like about this book? Uh, well, I think you can put Weems down as the, in the dislikes. Um, but I, I really like this book quite a bit, actually. I like that they expanded on the story of Doom. I like that they gave Doom Guy a personality, gave him friends, motivation for why he's doing things, and sort of a reason to keep fighting. I liked that uh, almost all of the weapons made an appearance in the book. Uh, the plasma rifle was the only one that didn't. Um, if it did appear, it probably had a different name. A lot of the other weapons in the from the game appear in the book. Some of them are given different names, like uh, like a more military sounding name. Like the chain gun is referred to as like the M something machine pistol, and it took me a while to realize that they were talking about the the chain gun. Um, the shotguns referred to, referred to as a riot gun, which makes sense to me. Um, the rocket launcher, the, the rockets are actually explained in a much better way. They're still carrying around just a ridiculous amount of ammo. They, like each, uh, both Arlene and, Arlene and Flynn, and also Rich, they kind of grab their own kind of like special weapons and everything. So... They're not all carrying around, like, 12 weapons. Flynn does for a little bit, but for the most part, no. So, they're carrying around a ridiculous amount of ammo. It's explained that the rockets are not, like, full-sized rockets, so these guys aren't carrying around 52-foot-long rockets. They're carrying around, like, little, I'm guessing, like, D-battery-sized rockets, which makes more sense to me, and hey, it's the future, so why not? So, that was kind of fun to see all that. I liked that they went around and were, like, naming the different demons to kind of explain what was going on. Like, the zombies, they got their name, obviously. The imps got their name. The demon got its name. Uh, the big pink things, they got, they're the demons. Uh, the Kakako demons they call uh, pumpkins, which was kind of funny, because they're just, why would they come up with a Kakako demon? Um, the Lost Souls, I think they call Flaming Skulls, because they just look like Flaming Skulls. Uh, the Prince of Hell, or the Baron of Hell is called the Prince of Hell, which, you know, sure, why not? Uh, the Cyber Demon got a different name as well. And then, I can't remember what they call the Spider Mastermind, they call it something else. But, pretty much every monster from, every demon from the first, uh, First Doom appears in here. So I'm kind of looking forward to see what they call the other demons when we get into the next next book. Um, oh, it's also kind of fun how they talk about uh, how they could get the demons to fight each other. That, that was pretty cool to read that, just because, you know, it's something you can do in the game, so it's kind of fun to see it in the book. Everything they, they mention just sort of makes sense, and it's kind of cool that uh, stuff showed up in here. There really weren't a whole lot of dislikes. Most of it just had to do with weems. Um, oh, God. Also, that in between each level, they when they, they go to like the different episodes, they apparently lose all their clothes and their weapons, so they have to like go find all this shit again. I thought that was stupid. And the uh, key cards. The fact that the key cards seem to be like single-use cards on each door, that was dumb as shit. And <laughs> it just led to them trying to find more and more keys. Those were really the only, like, bad things. And, and they were just kind of minor stuff to, like, keep the keep the story actually moving. So, yeah, it, for the most part, not a lot of dislikes. I, I really like this book. I'll do my best to keep this part short, <laughs> but... I've already kind of gone over what I wanted to talk about here. Uh, yeah, this is a really fun book. I'm looking forward to read the other, reading the other three in the series. It was a lot of fun to sit down and just read through somebody trying to turn a game that didn't really have a whole lot of story, and famously the developers said they don't really need one. I think it was John Carmack who said, uh, story in a video game is a lot like story in a porno. You expect it to be there, but it's not really necessary. And yeah, they they added quite a bit more with the with the book. They 
did a really good job with this one. And like I said, looking forward to reading the other three. So that's going to wrap things up. I will talk to you all later and have a great day. Bye.